come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'll be reviewing and paging through the magical land of Yeld from Adarashi Games. Should you open the door on action and adventure in the land of Yeld? Or should you make sure that that door stays locked and barred and you don't go anywhere near this role-playing game? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I am going to be reviewing the magical land of Yeld in just a moment. But first, I do want to remind you, if you end up liking this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell, because not only... Well, it lets you know when I upload videos such as this. It'll also tell you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on The Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com. For all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more, you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. So I'm diving into the magical land of Yeld, which is from Adarashi Games. This is a role-playing game written by Nick Smith and Jake Richmond with artwork provided by Jake Richmond. The 266-page premium soft cover book is available over at DriveThruRPG. You can get it with the PDF together for $49.99, or if you prefer, you can score the PDF alone for $11. And of course, I should once again point out the Gaming Gang is an affiliate of DriveThru RPG. So if you are going to swing out over to that site, please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, I get a little portion of that sale. And all those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do help keep the Gaming Gang around. So without further ado, let's swing on over to the other camera because I've got the magical land of Yeld. I knew nothing about this <laughs> before this arrived. In fact, I had shared a news piece about this role-playing game, and that was it. I knew the sell sheet info. That was it. That's all I knew about this role-playing game. It is, I don't want to say it's based on, but it, it takes place in the fantasy land that's featured in the webcomic Modest Medusa. And there's, there's the Medusa right down there. That's the character from the webcomic. So as you can see, she's not the focus of this role-playing game. It uh, is a game that's kind of geared towards younger gamers, but I will talk about that a little bit as well. You're going to find this is loaded with artwork. A lot of the key concepts of the game are presented in comic strip form to make it a little easier for people to understand. You're going to see that we've got the artwork from Jake Richmond throughout this entire book. This has lots and lots of artwork in it, and it's pretty impressive. So we're going to jump on in here. And one of the first things that I had noticed was there's pretty dense text here. Even though this is, this is kind of aimed at younger gamers, this is not some little slap together, you know, super lightweight role-playing game by any stretch of the imagination. I was very impressed by that because a lot of times we do see role-playing games that are designed for younger gamers and they're pretty bare bones as far as almost everything, not just mechanically, but even setting wise, that is not the case here with the magical land of Yeld. 
or maybe I'll just call it Yeld for short. So one of the aspects of the game is, I'll, I'll give you kind of a backstory to it, because essentially one of the things about this role-playing game that I thought was very interesting is it kind of has the whole plot and storyline built in already. Very unlike most role-playing games, we have a beginning, a middle, and an end to the journey of the various different characters. So we have our character creation, and each of the characters are young kids. So 12 or younger. And we'll have various different kind of archetypes as far as the kids as well. So we've got the big sister, we got the rival, the bully, the princess. And yes, boys can be a princess. They're just spoiled, is basically what that is. It's the know-it-all, the baby, the dog. Where's the cat, folks? Huh? Huh? Come on, Nick, Jake. What about cats here? I don't know, a little disappointed. But yes, you can play a dog. The brat, the liar. And then... One other aspect that I thought was kind of interesting, too, is the combat in the game takes place on a grid. So essentially an eight by eight grid. So you can use a checkerboard. You can use a chessboard if you'd like. And the way the fights play out is more along the lines of a tactical game, like a PC game or a console game, kind of a little bit too like Japanese role playing games because you're trying to kind of combo, you're going to try to establish some chains. So here we get discussion about the action board as well. Actions and fights, using magic, the action chain, that's what I'm talking about here. So one thing that I thought is kind of interesting here as far as when combat, whoever yells out, first, I'm going first, is going to go first in combat. Then once they perform their action, they're going to pick who goes next. So it is very possible for one player to choose the next player who chooses the next player who chooses the next player after that. And there's an action chain. So if the player before you, as an example, is successful, you'll get a bonus to your role for your action. So if the first two players were successful, you would get a plus two. If three ahead of you, plus three. So it's kind of interesting as far as the tactics, as far as the order that the characters will take their actions, because the weaker characters, or maybe the not-so-combat-heavy characters, will probably go last, hoping that the players can chain together and give the bonus to that final player. Now, interestingly enough, the monsters and villains, they also get to use these chains too. Uh, as far as what happens in combat when you run out of your tough dice, and I will talk about the main mechanics of the game in just a moment, you become a ghost. <laughs> so you become a ghost. Ghost in the ghost world. So you're not eliminated from the adventure, you become a ghost, and it is possible for you to return to life right there and then. It, if not, then the next time that the player characters spend the night at an inn, that character will be restored there, no matter where they were. I gotta be honest, I found that a little wonky, and I will discuss that uh, towards the end when I share my final thoughts as well. So talking about the mechanics of the game. So essentially, this is a dice pool game. And what you're, you're using six-sided dice. You're going to have a pool for the various different attributes. And what you get to do is you're going to roll your dice and add all of those together. So as an example, you might be rolling four six-sided dice. You're going to roll them all together. The game master is going to be rolling six-sided dice as well. And it's essentially whoever's higher wins. I got to be honest, I would have liked to have seen a little more uh, 
more of an opportunity for it just to be player facing where the players roll all the dice, especially if we're talking about playing this with smaller kids, younger children. Some, sometimes I find that the younger kids get a little upset with the game master's dice rolling, where if, if you just throw it at in front of the kids where they're rolling all the dice, probably won't see the same kind of hurt feelings. So we have the archetypes for the type of, of kids. Then we have their jobs. So we've got various different jobs, and they do pretty much uh, flow with the traditional fantasy tropes. But something I should mention as we're going through here, and you'll notice maybe some of the artwork, you'll see some blood. There's actually uh, there's an image of somebody who's lost their arm. <laughs> This game, this game world is kind of dark. And I'll explain what's going on after we get through uh, the different jobs here. So we we just saw the shepherd. Here we go. There's a shepherd. The shepherd is, is more along the lines of kind of a traditional ranger. We've got a lot of different magic users, which is cool. We have different schools of magic as well. And there are a lot of quests that are going on in the game also. So we also have some advanced jobs as well. But the dog is the tax collector. I'm rich! <laughs> I like the artwork throughout. I think the artwork is really nicely done. It, uh, it's not too childish is something that uh, really jumped out at me because I got to admit, I am not overly familiar with Modest Medusa. I have read a little bit of it, just kind of familiarize myself. It is, um, I mean, it, it's not necessarily you know, like f just for adults, but there are like adult things going on in that web comic. So here, like I said, we got some blood so as I mentioned, there's there's a darkness to this because essentially what the storyline is is that the player characters are kids that have found this door that takes them into the land of Yeld. Yes, I know. Straight out of Narnia. So the way it's supposed to be set up is that for the first few adventures, the, the kids can come and go however they please. They can adventure in the land of Yeld and they can return back home. So, of course, in the land of Yeld, there are, there are heroes or at least, you know, maybe even anti-heroes. Because like I said, there, there's some, some darkness involved in this setting. The kids, they, the kids don't have to be, you know, super heroic. That's why we have like uh, the black magic, like black mage spells tend to be a little little twisted, a little little dark. But anyway, uh, what eventually happens is at one point, there we go, somebody's arm has disappeared here. Like I said, some of the artwork's kind of kind of like, oh, okay, I thought this I thought this is just for little kids. No, it's not for little kids. And yes, it's like, wait a second, what is that doing in this book? Call imaginary friend. So we're, these are all the different spells we're taking a peek at here. But the premise is, eventually, the the kids are in Yeld, and they decide they're going to go home, but the door is closed, and they can't return home. And they have to find out how can they get back through the door. And what they find out is that if they spend too much time in Yeld, if they turn 13 in the land of Yeld, they'll become monsters. Never to return home again. So essentially what happens is now they've got a big quest. They've got to find out how can they be able to get back through that door. And it turns out that uh, the land of Yeld Looked like it was it was pretty nice and sweet and and wholesome to start off with, 
yeah, sure, there were some monsters here and there. But it turns out that the land is actually controlled by an evil vampire who has these minions. And there are these various keys that the characters have to collect in order to be able to get back through that door. There's some other stuff going on, too. I don't want to spoil it. But as I mentioned, I thought it was kind of interesting that we actually have a built-in storyline to this role-playing game. Another thing that I thought was kind of cool is we have a lot of page space and artwork devoted to items and equipment. I like that a lot. Also something that uh, takes place, and you'll see here we've got armor ranks, weapon ranks. As the player characters uh, gain experience and continue on their quest, they, of course, continue to get better, and they, it unlocks, like, bigger and better weapons and gear for them to utilize. So we've got all of this gear. We've got a lot of pages devoted to it. And I definitely appreciate it. We got tons of artwork. Once again, something that I always appreciate in any role-playing game is when we have the weapons, we get some images of those weapons as well. Because to be honest, especially if you're playing with younger players, they don't know what a war hammer looks like, right? They don't know what the difference between a an hatchet and an axe. So we have uh, some various different kind of like magical rare weapons as well. But I like this a lot. I thought that was very, very cool. As we kind of zip on through all of these, I was very impressed that this is not just a tacked together role-playing game to kind of piggyback on the popularity of the web comic. Now, I, I do understand that Jake Richmond has designed other role-playing games in the past. So this is not his first rodeo. And you can tell just by going through all of this stuff. Then we got some tables as well, some random tables. Magical Backfire, definitely always love games that involve things that can go wrong if your spells don't work. Then we get into the Game Master's Guide. And one of the aspects of this game that they recommend is that each time you play, someone new is the game master. So as an example, maybe I started off the adventures and I ran the first adventure. Well, then next time someone else is going to run the adventure. Next time after that, someone else is going to be the game master. I got to be honest, I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. And I will talk about that in just a bit as well when I kind of sum up my thoughts about this. So we get the story guide. This is where we start getting into the background of this tale. Now, at no time do you have to religiously follow what's going on with the different minions who have the keys uh, in order for the kids to get back through the door. It's your game. Do whatever you want. But you've got all this background here talking about what's going on. we got a monster guide here, so we've got a, a bit of a bestiary. You have the ability to create your own monsters if you want. It walks you through the process of creating a monster, different special dice, special abilities that the monsters might have. And then we get into the best theory here a bit. And there are some unique creatures in here that you don't run across in other games, like the Explode Pig. <laughs> Just kind of zip on through. Yes, the Tooth Facer Assassin. So I was talking about how this has a bit of a, it's like, these are fairies. <laughs> it's like, sure doesn't look like a fairy to me. That is a big, big old monster. But as I mentioned, the, there's a, a pretty unique style to all of this as well. Talking about monster gangs. So 
special boss monsters. The meanest Medusa. <laughs> I believe that is supposed to be. Now, I'm not. I haven't gotten this far in the webcomic. But I kind of think this is uh, Modest Medusa's mom. <laughs> I think. So, we get the Hunters of Yeld and the Vampire Prince Dragul. So, here we have all the background. This is all what's going on in the story. We get the different minions as well. Anyway, so I started talking about how this game is geared towards younger players, but there is a real dark aspect to this as well. Even though the way the rules are written, the player characters really can't die. They become ghosts and they get resurrected, which I don't necessarily agree with because right there that kind of means that the, the stakes really aren't that high. Yes, granted, okay, if the kids don't, get back through that door and they become monsters. Okay, I, I understand that. I get that. But to me, even if it's a fantasy role-playing game with, with younger kids, there has to be some sort of real stakes. I would maybe get to the point where I'd be like, okay, well, you can only re, you know, be restored from being a ghost so many times, something like that. Well, we've got a lot of really cool detail and background about the world. We get some adventures. And then we get uh, some background about the big bad. That is the vampire prince who rules the land. And then we'll have character sheets and whatnot. So I thought, well, once again, for a game that's kind of, you know, designed for, for younger players, that is a pretty substantial character sheet. <laughs> so. And some Game Master tools as well. The action board, as I mentioned before, has kind of a tactical layout to it. You're playing on an 8x8 grid. And of course, you know, you're just going to have, if you want to use miniatures, you can do that. If you want to use tokens, you can do that as well. And then we get an index and a little bit of a comic to finish up. And that is everything with the magical land of Yeld. Let's swing on over to the other camera and I will give this uh, some final thoughts as well as provide my review score. All right, so I got to point out, there are some things about the Magical Land of Yeld that I would probably not run as written. One of the things I had mentioned before is that each, each time you play, you're supposed to have somebody else as the game master. So what are you supposed to do with your character? That can be kind of tough uh, because you don't, it's very easy for game masters who are also running a character in a game to suddenly make it like their character is the star of the show. Plus, I got to be honest, I don't think I would want to be sharing all the game master details that are in this book with every player around the table. Personally, I think one game master and you're going to have a blast with this. All these different cooks ruining the soup and everybody knows what's going on in the story. Granted, yes, everybody can kind of throw their own angle into the tale. I don't know. I just, I don't feel that the adventuring would be as solid as if you have one game master running the game. As I mentioned, this game is kind of geared towards younger gamers, but not too young. So the way I would look at it is if, and you know your children way better than I possibly could, but I would say that if your kids have read like the later books or maybe you've read them to them, the later books in the Harry Potter series where those turn a bit darker, then I would say, okay, uh, if, if they're, you know, if they're not comfortable with, the possibility of 
killing monsters. And it even says in the book multiple times about killing monsters. So there is killing in here, which I know throws off a lot of people when we talk about role-playing games that are kind of geared towards younger players. Like I said, if, if there's not an issue with that, if they've, you know, if they've read Lord of the Rings or they've seen Lord of the Rings, they should be fine. Younger than that, or if you have more sensitive kids, I would probably not be running this as written or maybe avoiding it altogether because there is a solidly dark, heavy vibe to the magical land of Yeld once that door closes and the player characters can't return to our world. That said, if you are adults who are looking to play the game and play as kids, right, as as younger characters, then by all means, you should really have a blast with this. I would even go so far as to say that you could utilize this book and not even have children characters. You could have it where it's adults or young adults who have been transported to the land of Yeld and, you know, whatever. It changed some things around where they become monsters if they're there for two years or longer or something like that. You could easily port this over into something where it's not just little kid characters who are heroes in the magical land of Yeld. I like this a lot. It is a pretty easy system. It, once again, it's a dice pool system and you're just, you're not even rolling to see if, okay, well, I, a six is a success, like a lot of dice pool, or if it's like four, five, six is a success. No, you're just taking whatever dice for your attribute. Maybe you've got some a specialty because of your job or your weapon or equipment. You're going to take those dice. You're going to roll all those dice. You're going to tally them up. The game master is going to roll dice depending on the dangerousness of that adventure. Kind of almost like a difficulty number, but it tends to be the number of dice that they have an option to roll. And whoever rolls the highest comes out on top. Pretty simple. It's pretty easy to wrap your heads around. There's a lot to really dig about the magical land of Yeld. Something I should point out. And I mentioned, you know, sometimes we see some of these role-playing games that are kind of kind of licensed almost, or they're they're piggybacking on something else. And they're they're pretty bare bones. That's not the case with this. And there are also additional supplements that have come out for the magical land of Yeld. Here are just four of them that were sent along my way. I am going to do another video where I will talk about each of these. I'm not going to do a video for each. I will do a video with all four of them and talk about it. But I was very, very impressed that... It wasn't just, oh, this is just a one and done, right? So we've got towns and territories. And this goes into more detail about the villages and, and places of the land. We've got quest. Now, keep in mind, I haven't read through any of these yet. But quest is supposed to be more for like one-on-one -on -one games. So one game master, one player. And this just came out as far as I understand. Very happy to see that. I'd also say if you're looking for a crunchier game system, more rules, you could still pick up the Magical Land of Yeld and use it as a source book because there's a lot of cool stuff in it. All in all, I certainly do recommend the Magical Land of Yeld. I think it's it's going to serve its purpose for a lot of different people out there. Once again, for really small kids, I probably would not recommend it. But for older kids and, of course, adults who'd be interested in it, by all means, definitely check it out. So I give the Magical Land of Yeld a 9 out of 10. That's how much I've liked this. And you should definitely check it out. Worst comes to worst, get the PDF over at Drive-Thru RPG. 
266 page PDF for 11 bucks. That is a smoking deal. All right, that is it for this time out. Once again, do want to point out, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. Because it will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this, but also tell you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. So I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com. For all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. And of course, as I wrap up all of my videos during this never-ending pandemic, I certainly do hope all of you out there are being smart and staying safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, by all means, click right here. And if you'd like to check out one of our recent live streams, click right up top. And if you want to roll the dice and see what the algorithm for YouTube recommends, click right here. And of course, thank you once again for watching. And gang, please stay safe and wear a mask.